In this brand new series, I will regrade your footage based on the description provided by the client and then compare it to your final grade. This footage is a counterpart to a photo shoot for a Vogue feature on Austin Butler and it's provided by Jack. And here's the client's description for the look. Neutral and vibrant using Kodak 2383. Noticeable color separation between the daylight through the window and the lamps in the room. Not too pushed. And here's the final grade done by Jack, the filmmaker who provided this footage. At first glance, I like what I see and I can tell Jack knows what he's doing. But I believe we can get more color separation and detail in the highlights and shadows. So first of all, what's the big fuss about Kodak 2383? Well, let's take a look. Three key traits of the Kodak 2383 stock. Number one, color separation. Just look at how everything is so inherently pushed apart in the most natural way possible. Number two, color density. Look at how deep the skin tones look without looking overly vibrant or saturated. And number three, contrast. And I absolutely love the unapologetic nature of like the highlights and the shadows that are pushed, but are not blown out or crushed. And that to me is the signature of the 2383 stock. Now let's move on to top five best looking films that were printed on Kodak 2383 stock. Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Dunkirk, Mad Max Fury Road, and the Grand Budapest Hotel. And the reason why I picked these examples is not because they are the prettiest looking movies out there, but also how different they are in nature. And that gets to tell you that you can use the 2383 as your base, but you still have to go in and build your look DNA around that. So there is still a lot that needs to be done. It's not like you can throw a 2383 and all of a sudden your movie looks like John Wick. I'm going to be taking an advanced approach in this series and we'll be using paid third party plugins that I use professionally. Make sure you smash the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when I drop my next video and let's jump in. This footage is shot on Red Komodo in RAW and here are the RAW settings. IPP2, Red White Gamut RGB, Log3 G10. And now let me give you a quick rundown on my note tree. I pre-built this because I want to save time and make it concise. And I broke it into four different tiers. So the top is input device transform. The footage is coming in and we're converting it to the color space we want to work in, which is scene referred DaVinci white gamut. Then I'm going to do my balance right here. So that's the second stage. And then the third stage is creating or developing our look. And then the final stage is our display output. So what is it going to be shown on? And here we're going with the standard SDR, which is Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4. So that's all you need to know here. And first thing that I want to show you is that let's focus on the scopes and see what's happening. So this vector scope right here is going to show you where the entire image is sitting. And it's sitting on the top left quadrant, which is a bunch of warm tones. And we can even see it in our waveform. Like look at this dominant red up here compared to the blue all the way down here. And uh, then if we look at our colorized waveform, it tells the same story. Like from here to there, you can see like how the overall image has tons of warm tones. And the first request from the client was to make the image neutral, which means take this and then if we bring this right here and balance our image out, it's going to create the separation, AKA vibrancy. And then the colors are going to start to pop and they ask for color separation too. And that's going to happen just with this one step. My image is already converted to Rec. 709. I want to go under my balance. I'm going to be using my HDR palette and uh, the offset option or the global option in here because the best thing about this tool compared to using your offset in your primaries is that it doesn't mess with your Luma values. So if I were to go in and I just want to kind of balance my image out and I can just pull it down a little bit, I don't want to overdo anything. Um, and if, if I do before and after, you can clearly see the kind of separation we started creating in our image. So that's where I'm going to park that. The next thing that I want to do is now I want to go to my look and here I'm going to type in look designer. It's a tool created by Dado Valentic, and I absolutely love it. I pretty much use it on every single gig I work on. So first, when you drop it on, it's supposed to give you a Rec. 709. So that's why it's double letting right now. So we're going to go ahead and change that and put both of these to DaVinci White Gamut, since that's our scene referred color space we're working in. And now it's unaltered. OK, and now what I want to do is I'm just going to be fudging with the print options right here. So I'm going to go under contrast option and I'm going to select Kodak 2383. And right off the bat, just look at this image and what it did. 
It created a nice luma separation, which gives us the illusion of that there is a color separation too, right? So it enhances and just makes everything three-dimensional. Looks really, really good. I'm buying it. Like if we were to park it here, we're good because we did most of the legwork right here to create that neutral image that our client asked for. Let's take it a step further. So I'm going to go under print stock and I'm going to select Kodak Vision Color Print 2383. And as soon as I do that, look at the amount of colors that came in and how they're separated, which is the true nature of this film stock. So it created that color separation once again that our client wanted. The best thing about this method compared to using, let's just say, film looks from Resolve is that these are Rec. 709. So you can't eventually turn it into HDR. And more importantly, they are working with Cineon Log, which is just not as clean as when you're working in your scene referred in this case, DaVinci White Gamut. Or if you want to work in ASUS, you can do the same thing. And to top it all off, you can just go down here, click on export LUT, and then this gets converted into a LUT. So let's say if you want to pass it on to an online editor that's working remotely, you can just easily do this instead of having them buy the actual plugin. So there's so many advantages of using this plugin. And most importantly, if you're part of my masterclass, you get 20% off on this tool. And speaking of, now let me take this opportunity and share an exciting news. The doors to my masterclass are now open. And from today until March 24th, you can save $400 off if you sign up right now. Let's see what's inside FCM. 267 plus curated on-demand lessons, 100 gigs worth of professionally shot practice footage, access to exclusive Facebook community, weekly coaching videos with tailor-made feedback, $1,000 cash prize for the FCM Challenge winner, discounts on the best third-party plugins, Film Convert, Dehancer, Color Lab AI, Motion VFX, ShotDeck.com. FCM is the fastest growing color grading course. We have over 5,000 students in just three years. Our students are working with tier one companies such as Nikon, Porsche, Company 3, DJI, Formula One, and the list goes on. To make it a no-brainer, I'm throwing in a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, you're going to get your money back. Link is going to be up top and also in the description. So go ahead, sign up for the masterclass. Now back to the tutorial. One thing that I remember the client said is that don't push it too much. And I feel like the shadow detail is kind of getting there, right? Like if you look at the sculpts right here, my Luma waveform, we're kind of crushing the blacks almost, uh, especially when I compare it to the Rec. 709. Like there's so much information here where our image is just kind of getting in that space. So what I want to do is I want to go under my balance node right here and I'm going to show you this technique under your soft clip right here under your custom curves. Just grab this and bring it up and I want to bring it up. I don't want to bring it up too much, but I want to put it somewhere around here. And if I were to go and just look at his here as well, if I go before and then after, you can see how much information we're bringing back. I think we can kind of split the difference. So I'm going to pull it back a little bit to something like that. And I feel like that does the trick and makes it look really nice without sacrificing the contrast that comes with 2383. We don't want to lose that. Okay. Now the last step is going to be film box, this tool right here, another paid plugin. First, when you drop it on again, it's going to do the same thing. It's trying to double LUT the shot. So what we're going to do under the mode, I'm just going to select halation and grain only since this is going to be used for texture and it's already doing a lot. OK, so let's go ahead and change the source to DaVinci White Gamut. And if I can find it, DaVinci White Gamut right here, now everything looks proper and I'm going to go ahead and look at these options. So what I want to do is under my sharpness, because sometimes what happens is that you drop that on and it just makes the image a little too soft. In this case, I don't think it's necessarily doing that. So I'm going to leave that on. And under grain, what I want to do is I want to kill the saturation of the grain because I just want a monochromatic grain. And I really like how heavy this grain is. So I'm going to leave that on as is. But look at how beautiful this halation is. It just does such a beautiful job. So natural. So I want to leave that on. And I think we're pretty much done. So if I were to kill all of this, like where we started to where we ended up, we started with the balance. So we neutralized the image. We balanced the image first. Then we dropped the 2383. That was their request. They wanted that and they wanted tons of color separation. So the color separation is right there. And then we didn't really use adjustment because we didn't have to. And we went under texture 
and added grain and then halation to really make it look like film. None of this came at a cost of losing colors. We have so much color density here. We have perfect contrast without losing anything. And we have tons of color separation when it comes to like the window light compared to the lamp. And this will be our final look. And as promised, we achieved our objective in the most natural way possible. Make sure to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to participate in this series, the link to the Google form is in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.